Thank you, Demola. Good morning, uh, everyone. Good morning, all. Can, can you all hear me? Please let me know if you can hear me. Uh, I'll turn on, I'll turn on my, uh, my video shortly. I'm just trying to manage the bandwidth so that's there. Uh, yeah, so good morning. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, great, great. I can, I can see a lot of uh, wonderful names that we have uh, connected. I mean, we've been on LinkedIn together for a while now. Um, Chine Du is here. Um, I know that uh, Martin, I think Martin also, yeah, we are friends on, on LinkedIn uh, and a quite number of people here. So, so thank you so much uh, for having me. Uh, first of all, let me also uh, thank Demola for uh, bringing about this uh, platform uh, for people to congregate ideas, um, you know, to talk about the new things, uh, the latest thinking in uh, learning and development. It's really a great honor uh, choosing me to share my ideas uh, with the house on the topic, uh, the essential skills for talent development professionals. Basically, when, when I have the honor um, to do this, uh, one of my goals, yeah, is to ensure that uh, people take away one or two things and they are able to practice. It's very important. And they're able to practice it at work and also teach others. It's very, very important uh, because that's how learning takes place and how we multiply ideas, yeah. Uh, so please, you may not be able to apply everything, uh, but the few that you can pick today, please let's make sure uh, that we are able to apply uh, those things when we get to our various organizations. But please let, let me know if you are able to see my screen. Uh, can, can, you, can you see my screen now? Hello? You can see yeah, it. You can. 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 Oh, can. okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Great. That's that's awesome. So we, we'll be talking about the essential skills uh, for talent development professionals. Uh, and as Demola said, uh, my name is Hadi Duni Adebayo. Uh, our roadmap for today. Our roadmap for today. Uh, we look at four things basically. Yeah, four things. Um, and at the end of the day, we'll have opportunities to ask uh, questions and I'll be, able, I'll be willing to provide some answers based on my, uh, you know, some of the things that I have done. We'll quickly look at the role of uh, talent development. Um, I said, let me put L&D, but L&D is actually in the 90s or let's say early 2000s, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to see that uh, today. The role of talent development L&D Pro today, uh, three important trends shaping and transforming the uh, talent development and L&D uh, field and space, and those essential capabilities uh, that we need to build for success uh, going forward, uh, because uh, I, there's no way I will talk around this that I will not talk around the VUCA environment that we, we, we currently play in, uh, and it's important that we build our skills and we're able to audit our skills relative to the current situation that we are, we are, we are being confronted uh, with. Then how, how do you create your own professional, uh, how do you create your own professional development? So basically, uh, within the allotted time, within the 45 minutes uh, given to me, uh, I'm going to talk around uh, these things and we'll be able to ask uh, questions. Yes, yeah, so uh, a little bit about my career story. Um, so uh, founder of Incel Consulting. Incel Consulting has been in, uh, in, the, in, 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 uh, in the business uh, space now uh, for about 11 years. Uh, and uh, it's actually as a result of my, um, I'm also an accidental, uh, consultant, but I won't want to go into details today. I'm, I'm sure if we have another opportunity to talk, I, I'm going to share my a little bit of my experience. Uh, in all together, about, I have about 16 plus years experience. Uh, uh, and part of that experience is where I've worked as performance improvement consultant uh, to top organizations. I've consulted uh, with top organizations, uh, both in the public and the private sectors, 
SMEs, MSMEs, and large organizations where uh, I've been able to um, work on several interventions, uh, corporate strategy deployment, learning and development strategy, organizational design, then large scale performance interventions. Uh, then there's, a, a, I mean, I'm also the host of Performance Tools LinkedIn Live, uh, where I've had the opportunity to uh, also bring top leaders, uh, where we exchange ideas, I ask them questions, and we exchange ideas on what they've done and on the latest thinking uh, within our space, within the talent development space. Um, I've had guests like Dave Ulrich on my platform, John Potter, Ram Sharan, and a quite number of people that we've read a lot about them. And uh, we've applied some of their principles, some of their models and theories uh, into what we, 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 we've been doing. Uh, yeah, so that's just a little bit about uh, me. And um, and I know if you'd like to know more, you, you can check my uh, LinkedIn profile. So thank you. Uh, so like I said, we'll discuss these four things. And um, these four areas that we're going to have discussion today is basically as a result of what I have seen. Um, one, as a practitioner, um, functioning as an L and D, because in the past I've also uh, worked uh, within. It's called the training department. Uh, I worked briefly in the training department uh, while I was working in my um, in my banking job then. Uh, then after I left, uh, moved into consulting, I've also been learning and development, uh, head of learning and development. But in the last few years, I I've worked more with the C-level executives, uh, most especially to design some of these things. So basically, the ideas that I will share today, uh, they're more field ideas uh, than theory. Of course, we also look a bit about uh, uh, theory. But there's no way we can talk about the role of TD today uh, without quickly uh, taking a look at the uh, evolution of talent development. Yes, uh, you know, there's no way we'll talk about it without looking at the evolution of talent development. Uh, and I'll just quickly bring us to that. Um, so we, we have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, uh, histories. I mean, th there's a, a lot of uh, things that we can see, as I've put it here. The talent development, learning and development uh, function has evolved, you know, um, over, over, over the years. And let me say that the continuously uh, evolving theories um, and practices of learning, as we have it today, uh, learning, training, as the case may be, um, as old as the history of human, and you will agree with me, uh, from the, the 16th, 17th century AD and all of that, uh, where uh, our four, four, four fathers were practicing something like OJT, on the job training. Uh, it's a sort of learning. Um, of course, in the pre 20th or so century, apprenticeship uh, came to fall. Uh, which has been adjudged as the best. I mean, our Igbo brothers, we know uh, what it is uh, when they talk about uh, apprenticeship. It's also um, it's a sort of uh, training. And a lot of organizations, even today, uh, they still practice that sort of um, apprenticeship uh, where you have a master and the master actually takes um, his workers through some sort of skills building over a period of time you know, on and on, on and on like that. Uh, the early 20th century, because of the industrialization and all of that, uh, we began to see, uh, I, I'm talking about organizational learning. We began to see where uh, organizations, businesses were, you know, they, they, they were springing up and skill building became one of the uh, focal point where people also were sent to uh, schools, uh, organizations who pay for people to go to certain universities and all of that uh, to build some of these skills on and on, on and on like that uh, up until uh, late 60s, you know, um, where computer-based training, when computer started coming about, uh, the invention of computer, they started doing some sort of computer-based training. 
uh, up until 1990s and uh, the early 21st century and 21st century that uh, we are, you, you know, we are in right now. Now, the role of L and D today, as we speak, uh, is a function of the changes that we have begin we have been seeing um, in our uh, in our environment. Yeah. Just take it like that. The, the, the role of L and D has evolved, like I've said. Um, and what we have today is as a result of the changes that we are seeing right now. Let me give you a, a very good uh, example. Um, I remember having a conversation with someone in the US, sorry, in Canada during COVID, shortly after COVID uh, broke. Uh, who works within an L&D function uh, of an insurance company. And the guy said that uh, the L&D team were practically turned to consultants, yeah, during the COVID. I said, why? He said, because he found out that, the organization found out that uh, the, the questions that people were asking were the kind of questions that typical customers I've never asked before. And as a result of that, uh, the organization told them to begin to develop products. I mean, this is the L&D team, that the L&D team should begin to develop products, begin to develop programs in order to enlighten the customers and in order to, um, in order to bring about new, new solutions to people's problems. So that's why I said that uh, L&D team today, L&D function today has really evolved, um, has evolved from just uh, designing training, designing content, uh, or just managing training to a full-scale performance consulting. And I know that uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, what performance consulting uh, is all about. So most of the time, most of the time, as L&D uh, practitioners, or, or professional, uh, we typically want to uh, just jump to, I, I call it uh, a quick approach to solving problems. But I've always said, I've always said to uh, people who are so close to me that, hey, the work of an L and D person is not different from the work of a doctor. Yeah, of a, more like a physician. That's, that's, that's the way we should begin to approach our work. And when we say L and D, we are only addressing the learning and development function of our, it's very, it's very microcosm of what we need to know and what we need to do. Our role is more of a physician. And I will explain, and, and those are the areas that we really need to build our skills. Um, so most of the time, uh, when managers or when we are asked to do something, we function more as an order taker. We take orders from managers, from performance management, uh, uh, maybe orientation, employee orientation, boarding, and all that. We're asked to develop programs. Uh, when managers falter or there are issues, we're asked to go and develop programs. But we only listen to the go approach. We, we most of the time, we don't even conduct our root cause analysis. And that's where performance consulting comes in. Uh, there's no better way um, to develop solutions, interventions, without having an adequate knowledge, adequate root cause analysis of what the problem is, just like a doctor. There's never a time you will go to a doctor and that's why I said our role is more like a doctor, uh, that of a physician. There is no way that a, um, a patient, a patient will go to a doctor and do doctor will say, go and use paracetamol. I, I have never, I've never come across that doctor except to say quack. And that is the way we need to approach our work. Let me give an example. I won't want to mention a name here also, because that's why I said that um, I, I will share more field experience. There was a training. We were asked to come and uh, conduct a training. Chinedu knows the person, the organization I'm talking about, but I won't mention the name. We were asked to come and do a sales training. Uh, 
uh, that the organization, a lot of their salespeople, they were, can you hear me, please? Please, can, can people hear me? Yes, we can hear you, sir. Oh, oh, great, great. So we were asked to come and do training. Um, so as, a, as, as, as more like our methodology, we we'll say, okay, let's even know what the challenges are. Uh, the HR said, no, we know what the problem is. I said, just give us that opportunity. Let's do some sort of analysis. So myself and my team, we deployed our, our, our tools um, to talk to the salespeople, to talk to the managers and all of that. Uh, when we analyzed our data, what we got basically was that it wasn't an issue. So they were, it was a training they said uh, should be like a, neg I think negotiation, uh, negotiation and closing. Yeah, closing and negotiation skills or something. But when we, when we did our analysis, we found out that the challenge was actually not a negotiation problem. It, was, it wasn't a negotiation problem. It wasn't a closing problem. But initially, the HR told us that the, the people were getting a lot of um, RFQs. The organization was getting a lot of R it, it was a unique industry. They were getting a, a lot of RS RFQs. Uh, Request not even request for proposal now request for quotation, but about they were only able to close about maybe five percent of those RFQs running into several billions of naira. Now, I told the HR that this is something you can actually do in house. She said, "I know as part of the things she needs to take and all of, all of that is to say training, but within me I smiled and I said." <laughs> If only you knew that you actually wanted to waste this money. I was trying to persuade her. She insisted that, no, we need to run this training. So we ran this training. But at the end of the day, the people, the, the participants, and everybody actually agree that the challenges, in fact, not challenges, the only challenge they had was product knowledge. And it was because of the fact that it was a new product introduced to the organization by the Chinese. They just introduced into Nigeria. But the Chinese counterpart have not really had time to train the salespeople over a period of time for them to understand the features, the, the fab, the features, advantages, and benefits of that product. That was what happened. It was more like a, 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 a waste, I, I must tell you. Because even this training would have been done by the counterpart. So, so that, that's to let you know that if you are not able to understand how performance consulting works as a training, uh, as a talent development professional, there is no way you will be able to solve real problems. And that's why most of the organization, most of the time, we're not able to get the buy-in from the uh, business owners, from the uh, CEOs, from the CFOs, because they'll be asking you uh, we've trained our people, we've conducted, we've done a lot of these interventions. Some of these, a lot of these interventions are not working. And that's what it is in a lot of organizations because we really do not also understand how we need to approach. See, let me tell you, 90% of the time, training is not always the solution. I, I, in the course of my work, I, I, I distill about, I think about 300 interventions that as a talent development professionals, we need to know. We need to be able to, to know and be able to, you know, just like a doctor, when you go to a doctor, he has an idea of the symptoms, certain symptoms. And when he's able to conduct his analysis, it will tell you, hey, you have cancer. This is what we need to do. It will tell you, you have malaria. This is what, that is the way we need to approach our work. And that is why I am saying that learning and development is an old nomenclature of our work. Well, talent development is still very fair because we, for you to develop talent, there's a lot of things that we need. you need to be able to do. In some organizations, um, uh, talent development, learning and development uh, functions are responsible for employee engagement. Uh, they are responsible for performance management. They are responsible for leadership development. I'm talking about complex organizations now. Uh, they are responsible for so many, many, many things. 
And if tomorrow you find you, you get to find yourself in those organizations, will you be able to deliver and work like a core professional? So, I mean, in the course of working with professionals, those are the challenges, the skills, the skills gap that have, have been seen. And if you don't have these skills, my brothers and sisters, there is no way you can design solutions that will help individuals, that will help teams, and that will help organizations actually uh, perform. So that's that about where uh, we are right now. Now, I want us to quickly reflect on, um, you know, based on our reality as it is in the world that we are today, because you can't build the skills, the essential skills that we are talking about without understanding uh, the context of our world that we are in right now. The concept of the work, the concept of the workplaces and the workforce. Yes. Now, I, I put it here for a quick reflection for us. Um, um, and I ask this question, maybe someone in just one, one, in just 20 seconds, maybe someone can quickly tell us that in your organization, what are the noticeable forces that you have seen that are shaping these three things, the work, workplaces, and workforce? Um, Ademola, I don't know if there's anyone who can, who probably can just quickly talk to us, uh, because I like a situation where the, the conversation is actually, uh, uh, you know, it's a two-way. Uh, is there, yes, is there I, someone I who can... Uh, Sorry, can, can you their mic to uh, just just um, unmute your mic um, if you can just quickly tell us just in thirty seconds because we have a lot to talk about and uh, the question time is there. Is there anyone who just probably want to help? Uh, the things that you have seen that are the forces, they are forces, and and as learning and development professionals, I would I will tell us how we need to connect that to what we are doing and the skills that we need to build. Yeah, thank you. Is there anyone here, uh, please? Oh, okay, Isaac, great, great. Yeah, Isaac, please unmute and uh, quickly talk to us. Um, yeah. Mm. Good morning, sirs, and everyone. Good morning. Mm. Okay, one of the noticeable things in our organization that is changing our workplace is number one, COVID was the thing that brought it working from home. Awesome. So awesome. remoted you know, people are no longer interested in staying in the office every day. They want to work from home. And another mm. thing is uh, uh, moonlighting. When I'm what I mean by moonlighting, people want to do two, three jobs at once. Mm. Mm. It also awesome. 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 So awesome. Those, thank you. Those are... th th thank you so much, Isaac. Thank you so much. Um, any other person in in, in thirty seconds? Any other person in 30 seconds? Let me see my time. We're at 10.35. Okay. Yeah, any other person? If, if we, we can't find uh, another person. See, um, our work has, has become very, very strategic. Whether you are working as a consultant, uh, managing learning and development function in an organization, or you are responsible for delivering learning and development function in, in a uh, in a consulting firm or, or whatever, where you are looking for that to take. See, you must come to terms with the realities of these forces. He cited an example of COVID. People don't want to do physical things anymore. So if you are still thinking that uh, you want to be doing physical, uh, physical training, <laughs> uh, one is still living in the past. I will quickly cite an example. I lost a very, uh, an exalted position, a very good uh, position years ago because um, I, I told, I told um, Demola that I will share this story in the course of this conversation. Uh, it's one of the top consulting firms that we, had, we were talking about before we came in. So I had met with the, uh, the head of learning I mean, a senior a partner in learning who was uh, overseeing learning. And they actually wanted me to come and take his position. In fact, he was already telling me that, um, you know, we were already talking about so many initiatives and all of that. 
But when I met the, the founder, when I met the CEO, the first question here, after I made the presentation to the entire team, all the partners, they, they clapped for me. And he asked a question. He said, doing, uh, can you tell us your, the skills that you have in technology, in e-learning? Because part of the things that you come and do is to help us drive the technology part of this business. I said, I'm sorry, sir, I, I don't have. But it's something that I can learn. I, I mean, I was very authentic. I, I, I mean, it's not something that I, I would say that because he, my, my CV looked very robust to him and he was just looking for, he said, in fact, when I finished presenting, he said, fantastic. But that was just the only question he asked me. And unfortunately, I couldn't get that role just because of that singular skill. So what am I saying is that the environment that we are in right now has changed or there's no way to not change uh, you know, the strategy of our organization. A lot of organizations years ago never thought that uh, the things that we are doing virtually now were possible. So for you as a learning and development practitioner, as we are talking right now, understanding of your world, your business environment, the catalysts that are changing your environment is very, very important. It's not just about content development. It's not just about content development. You must, you must have business acumen. You must understand how strategy works, even at the, at the minute scale, how the organization makes money. Because it's only that way you can be able to design intervention. I will use intervention, not training. Because training is just one of the things that we need to know. I will use intervention or to coaching. Leadership development is another intervention that we must be learning and development audit. Ability to audit. I, 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 I always say that after 18 months, audit your learning functions or talent development functions and see what works, what hasn't worked, and the lessons that you need to learn and make a case, make a presentation to the senior executive that, hey, I'm abandoning this. We, are, we need to focus on this because of the strategy, because of where we are going to as an organization. A, a lot of contexts are around us now. Uh, the death of Queen, the 2023 elections. Um, if we have, if for adventure, we're having a change of party, a change of leadership, what will be the implication to your business? We need to be thinking, and we need to be thinking of the skills we need to be. Let me give you an example before I move on. I facilitated a strategy session for an organization. And I, in the course of, when we were facilitating that training, virtual two-day program, I told them that your strategy is stale. The HR was very angry with me. I said, well, is the, is the, is the bitter truth. Now, in the course of the, we were doing SWOT analysis virtually. And they got to know that doing sit at home in the East, on, a, on every Monday, when sit at, if sit at home was still happening in the East, the company gets to lose 300 million Naira every week. Every week. Every week. And I told the learning and development that, so what are you still doing when it comes to that? To call the long story short, the company after some time, they had to sell the, the, the sold part of the, the the shares. I think they've even merged now. I won't also want to mention the name because of confidentiality. Now, it's because the uh, talent development and the HR functions were not in tune with the reality within the environment of business. Now, let's move on. Of course, we have I've talked a little bit about the VUCA environment. Um, what we have just talked around now is to contextualize the environment where we work to be, to be a VUCA world. Uh, to be very volatile, to be very uncertain, to be very ambiguous and complex. And that's the way we need to con con contextualize our work. Now, let me quickly come to this so that we can understand where we, a lot of us have been operating. Now, you can see the operational part where we have order taking. Most of us, we are still here at the operational level of talent, learning and development, when we take order from managers, we say, ah, this person, uh, the customer service issue, uh, 
uh, is not able to go and develop training. There's conflict management, go and develop training. That is simply means, that simply means you are an order taker. You take order from managers. Managers will give us shit. As much as, they, as much as we claim that they know, but because we are professionals, we are supposed to act as interventionists and a master diagnosticians. We just take it like that and we waste a lot of money. And we are, we will say that we are performance enablers we, because of all the interventions we are putting in place. No, there is no way you can do your work very well or build the skills that we want to build when you have not moved to that strategic part. We know that some people will still operate at that operational level, but a lot of us will need to move to that strategic part. And that is where we can even earn a lot and change our games. Because business owners want, they are talking about money, value, value creator. When an organization says that they are going to locate, uh, you look at their strategy and it says that, okay, in six months, they are looking to get a certain business. Maybe um, a ministry is giving you a, a, a business. Are you thinking in terms of the skills and compete capabilities? No, that don't let me use this. Capabilities that those people need to build. If you if your organization has put in their strategy document that they want to do 100 billion uh, for this year, you ask yourself, do you are thinking, let's think in terms of skills. If you want to do 100 billion as an organization, have you done it before? Can you do it? Do you have the skills or competencies that can help you do it? It's not about the training that we waste our time, we waste our energy. It's a different conversation entirely. We need to understand the, the, how we create value. And that is one of the skills that I'm talking about that are essential for us to build. Uh, let me quickly look at what people uh, are saying. Tools that can be used, SWOT, option for remote working. Okay, great. Uh, I love all of this. Uh, okay, okay, yeah, we, we have limited time, yeah, to go. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, so this is where we need to move. We need to move from our operational work to the strategic part. And I can tell you, uh, there are a lot of job opportunities out there in our role, even outside of Nigeria. We are looking for people who can move from order taking to a value creator. Value creator. I, I know that it's a. We, we can also expand that. I mean, so in, in the course of uh, my work. Uh, these are some of the essential skills that I have seen. Some of the skills that have actually worked for me uh, within my talent development space. Like I said, I've, I've laid over, uh, emphasized on the stra uh, strategic mindset, having a strategic mindset uh, within our talent development space. Uh, we can see some of these skills, uh, data analytics, uh, content development, uh, yeah, sorry, uh, yeah, content development, instructional design, they are two different things. They are two different things entirely. Yeah, uh, online learning, so it talked about uh, COVID-19 now. So people want to learn um, online now. In fact, I always say that when you are managing learning and development function and you don't have a technology as a tool, you are not there at all because people want to learn in the flow of work now. Yeah, that's what we call the flow of work. People want to learn as they are working. And that's the essence of some of these uh, interventions that we need to put in place, like bite-sized learning, uh, synchronizing some of these, uh, um, some of these, um, some of these solutions online. Because people don't want to stay in this. Imagine before, we'll just probably converse somewhere in VI or or Ikeja talking about this. People in two hours, learning is taking place. Um, and a lot and lot of this, more than this, um, I mean, some of these competencies that have actually helped me uh, in, my, in my talent development uh, space, uh, business acumen performance. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you won't call me to come and do anything for you when I've not looked at it and not, when I've not done some sort of analysis. That's why I call myself a, 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 a diagnostician. I would diagnose you to know that this is what you need to do. It's not left for you to go and do it. You know, and a lot of that, a lot of the things that we need to build. Um, yeah, so in, in building, you know, a, a professional development, 
Um, I know some of us will be asking, how, how do I get to build some of these skills? Uh, the most important thing, as much as we want to give attention to certification, uh, please and please is by doing. Is by doing and also having people who are coaches who probably have been doing this thing uh, to like uh, guide us, to like take us through this, uh, how to build some of these skills. But beyond that, um, I know one of the association that I always recommend is uh, ATD, Association of Talent Development uh, US, uh, where they, I mean, when you go to their website, td.org, you will see a lot and lot and lot of tools, methodologies. In fact, it is the gold standard of, of, of talent development. Uh, there's ISPI, uh, Institute of, uh, uh, yeah, per performance. Yeah, they're into ISPI.org. That's the, yeah. They, they, I mean, that's also another good uh, uh, organization where you can build your professional development within the talent development space. Uh, then also there's LPI, Learning and Performance Institute UK. Uh, yeah, but basically, uh, what ATD has done is to now distill, you know, they carried out the competency study about two, three years ago. They came up to bucket the competency for talent development. They, in fact, they, they changed from competency to capability. Yeah, to bucket it into three different capability areas: uh, personal capabilities, organizational capabilities, and developing professional uh, professional capabilities. There are about twenty, yeah, twenty three capabilities altogether uh, that you need to build as a talent development professionals. I mean, for some of us who probably are also looking to develop that. Uh, yeah, uh, we can we can actually do that. Uh, yeah. Personal, professional, and organizational. Uh, within the personal, these are the comp competencies, lifelong learning, project management, cultural awareness and inclusion, collaboration and leadership, communication. You will see that these are personal, you, you know, skills that you need to be able to have to relate with people and to get you on that job. Uh, professional capabilities, we have evaluating impact is a very key skill because if you are not um, evaluating the impact of your programs, not training alone, your programs, I mean, that's so, some sort of calculations that you need to be able to do, uh, instructional design, technology application, knowledge management, coaching, learning sciences, a lot of that, a lot of learning sciences, training delivery and facilitation, career and leadership development. Uh, this is the organizational capability you need to be able to build change and on and on like that. Uh, I'm sure that we need, we will be able to uh, share some of these. I'll share this with Demola and Demola will be able to share some of this uh, with us. Thank you. I know uh, the time is fast spent. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah. yeah th thank you.